So if you um, add together the market capitalization of all big tech companies that are focused on AI, you would get a figure north of $10 trillion. So Nvidia alone has like a market capitalization of three trillion or so, mainly based on AI. Uh, we have Tesla, we have Google, all of them are basically AI companies. And AI is the foundation of our economy. We, we will soon see killer AI applications such as self-driving um, robot taxi networks. Check out our uh, other videos on the Finkster channel. Give me a like and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in these kind of tech videos. And, um, and one of the foundations of this AI industry, basically the foundation, I would say, of the AI industry is the multi-layer perceptron um, idea, so, uh, uh, which, which basically gives us the um, technology of deep learning so we can represent knowledge better. And uh, multi-layer perceptrons are just uh, what you may know as artificial neural network, a specific architecture of artificial neural networks and uh, where you rep represent information in the weights of the artificial synapses connecting neurons that fire if a certain impulse um, lies or, or, or is, is fed into uh, through the weight into the neuron. And um, this basic architecture is now challenged with uh, the arrival of a new architecture called Kolmogorov Arnold Networks, or in short, CAN. So the, the question in this video should be very shortly, I, I will focus, like I will explain it very quickly, but I will focus on the question, how disruptive is it really? And um, yeah, first of all, why? Why should you bother listening to this very quickly? Neural network is simply a complex, or you might read intelligent function. A function, why function? Because you, you put in an input, you get an output, right? The input is say a um, stream of video or maybe a, a short video and maybe recorded from cameras and the output is a driving command. So in this way, by using these kind of functions, we can create self-driving cars, for instance. So a neural network is a complex, or you can read intelligent function, consisting of a huge number of simple, or you can read dumb functions, right? Because each neuron, basically, is a very dumb function, um, an activation function, you could, uh, uh, you could say, based on, the, based on the linear combination of the inputs, uh, the, the function weights. Um, so we have many simple functions and we create a more complex function based on the simple function. This is all there is to AI in a way, right? And uh, just learning the weights of the dump function and then combining them to the more intelligent function is what we are doing in AI training. So a key research, research question is, if we replace the dump function, functions, the neurons, the trillions of dumb function, right? Or maybe hundreds of billions even. Um, with more intelligent functions, can we get better results with less overhead or more efficiently? So can we get more with less by replacing dumb function with more intelligent functions? So it should like a very simple basic research question. And, um, and uh, yeah, we might be onto something here. Uh, with, uh, we use the following insight. Neurons in multi-layer perceptrons are nonlinear, which is good. Yeah, nonlinear because you can express complicated things in a neuron, um, but fixed because we use a fixed activation function. The neuron is nothing but an activation function, and all neurons basically have the same activation function. So based on the weight, and based on the impulse that goes into the neuron, and the, the impulse is based on the weight on the synapses and the connections between neurons, and um, and collectively we kind of add together all. Um, impulses that go through the weights in, uh, that are fed through the weights into our neurons we, we, we add them together and then we decide based on our um, nonlinear activation function whether the neuron should fire or not so it works much like in our brain and um, so the neurons so the, 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 our artificial brain the artificial neural network consists of neurons and synapses the neurons are nonlinear but fixed, so we cannot change them, which is bad, right? Uh, but synapses in uh, multi-layer perceptions are linear, which is bad because you lose expressivity, but learnable, which is good because you can change the weights. The synapses are basically the weights in a matrix multiplication. And if you don't quite understand what is going on here, then check out our other video 
um, about uh, why, why matrix multiplication is the primitive of our time. So the question is, or the key insight might be, can we create a representation that's both nonlinear and learnable in its dumb functions? <laughs> kind of the, making the dumb function more intelligent, uh, i.e. making them nonlinear and learnable uh, so they can learn things over time. And here's the quick overview, uh, like a bit mathematical, but on the left we have multilayer perception, on the right we have Kolmogorov Arnold network. So very quickly you could represent it like this, the multilayer perception. Here we have the uh, we have the weights that feed into the dump linear and learnable uh, 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 the the dump nonlinear activation functions that are here represented with this dump guy, right? So we have many dump guys and together those dump guys basically might create an intelligent function. And uh, the idea of Kolmogorov Arnold networks is that we replace a dumb guy with an intelligent guy basically and we kind of unify the representation. So the input, we can see it here, the input for each activation function is the combination of the outputs of the previous activation functions. So it kind of directly feeds feeds in, in, in into this. And um, and um, and here you see the activation functions can be very can become very complex. All of those little pictures are different. So you see there are different activation functions for each of those pictures. And those activation functions are learned. And they are learned by using a combination of uh, smaller functions called splines. So basically it's kind of each of those activation functions is a combination of smaller dump function. So in a way you might ask, okay, maybe is it just shifting the complexity and, 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 you, and you would be right, right? Because now each, uh, each activation function now represents a combination of many dump functions, which is, which is like this combination is expressed as a, a spline. Okay, but this is the main idea. So we have the, we replace the many dump functions with many intelligent functions and hopefully get a better representation and faster learning convergence. And, um, and uh, the TLDR is that they are promising early results, but they use tiny data. So they use small functions here on the top. You see the functions they approximated like here some f, f of x, y equals x times y, for instance. And they used then very simple, very small um, uh, network, uh, neural networks, firstly based on CANs and secondly based on MLPs with different depth uh, to express these kind of functions. And and um, you see on the, the, the lower is better, right? And on the x-axis we see the number of parameters. Um, on the y-axis we see, we see the error. And um, by adding more parameters, the error gets reduced over time, right? And this is what we expect. This is basically what they call the scaling laws. So we, we just throw in more parameters, more complexity, we get better results. And throw in more data, more training, we get better results. I have discussed scaling laws many times on this channel. And, um, and you can see in thick blue, the CAN the Kolmogorov Arnold uh, network representation. And you see it converges faster to a lower error than multilayer perceptrons. And there's one big caveat. So there, uh, first of all, multilayer perceptrons are not kind of the state of the art rep representation of, uh, of deep learning. So we have many, we've had many, many advances since then and transformers are very much more complicated. Uh, um, um, mechanisms or uh, neural network representations. But of course, you could also build more complicated representation based on CANs. So they kind of use the simplest representation of uh, deep learning today and compared it with their simplest representation, basically suggesting that, that we might switch out MLP-based representation with CAN-based representation over time uh, so basically changing the engine as uh, during flight, right? <laughs> changing the engine of AI uh, as, we, as, we, as we are integrating it uh, in, in our society. Okay, all of this is great. I mean, this looks very promising. We need less parameters to get to a lower errors for simple 
uh, functions on tiny data. But now, of course, there are some um, trade-offs. You always need to be aware of the trade-offs or disadvantages. And what are the disadvantages is with cans? So uh, first, it looks beautiful, right? Cans converge faster, achieve lower losses, and have steeper scaling loss than MLPs, which is, sounds like a win-win, right? The big problem I see, and they, they also point out in the paper, is that they can only run it on tiny data. Why? Because of parallelization, um, the parallelization problem. If you look at a GPU, what is a GPU? A GPU takes, takes uh, multiple data, takes huge amount of data, splits the data into smaller chunks and then runs the same function on all of these chunks. So we have large data and we, we, we batch the large data through the same function. And basically GPUs is hardware explicitly designed for those type of highly parallelizable problems. And that's why we can create such huge scales um, um, with, with um, deep learning today. That's why AI is winning, because we can push the scaling laws further than we have ever done before. We can, add, we can use more and more parameters. We can parallelize the shit out of this. Sorry for the expression. And, um, and, um, and use trillions of parameters to learn very, very complicated functions such as natural language, speech generation and so on. So generative AI is all based on scale. It only works because of scale, because of the ability to parallelize it using GPUs. And Currently, the paper doesn't suggest any, any, uh, uh, any great way to, to parallelize uh, training of CANs, of uh, Common Growth Arnold Networks. And they even mentioned that the major re reason for uh, the major disadvantage uh, or future work, you could call it, is efficiency. Re CANs run slowly. Why? Because you have so many so many intelligent functions here and these functions all of them are basically different so if you look at this this graphic here in the multi-layer perceptron all of those functions are the same these activation functions are all the same that's why we can do the batch processing with gpus but with kolmogorov of arnold networks all of these little functions are different which means we need, we need um we, we, we cannot easily parallelize this. And of course, there could be like you could do future research, maybe find a trade off between, between uh, using different activation functions, maybe use only 20, 30 different activation functions and then uh, kind of doing a recombination of those. But all of this would have to be explored and, uh, and, um, and you need to explore the trade off space. And, and this, of course, now takes a lot of the. Um, of the advantage of this, right? Because if we have no, no great way to parallelize execution of those cans, basically it becomes useless to us. And they were uh, like the paper, let me quickly check. So here you can see the paper. So if you look at who has written the paper, it is written at MIT, California Institute of Technology and Northeastern University. So they would have had the money to scale up uh, computation on a, on a distributed cluster. Maybe they could even throw, uh, like purchase an NVIDIA H100 or multiple of them and train some real stuff, do some real training on real data, like interesting stuff, not like um, stupid little functions like those, right? But doing some real evaluation, but they didn't. Why? Because and this is my opinion now. Now we are like leaving the, this um, scientific, scientific area and now we go into the, into the rough real world of opinions. Um, because they couldn't, they, they couldn't manage to do it. They, it, they, it. it is just too inefficient, too slow to train um, those, those deep learning uh, networks. They couldn't fix the problem of parallelization quickly. That's why they decided, okay, let's first push out the paper and maybe add it to the future work section, right? But this is, I mean, unless they solve this problem, it is basically useless, more or less. I mean, it didn't, no research is useless, right? It can be used for some niche problems or so, but it won't affect AI as it is today 
it won't affect the 10 trillion dollar industry much in my opinion um, and I can be, I could be wrong right um, because of this huge disadvantage of not being able to f do the fast training and fast inference and uh, so if you ask should I use cans or MLPs you go this route efficiency and want fast training and if you answer yes you should use MLP and this is currently this route is basically wo where most of the value is at this point it might change in the future right we might find new applications and in this graphic it, it, it looks like can is superior in most instances but if 90% of the use case is this yellow line <laughs> which is like this is my yellow line, line I draw it, draw it uh, there, right? If most of the use cases are there, then basically MIP, multi-layer perception-based AI training will still uh, be sufficient. So, of course, there will be future research on this and I'm really, I will, I will check out the future research as well and if I find anything really interesting, I will keep you updated, so subscribe to the channel. Um, currently, um, I don't see an immediate threat for to um, to so threat or opportunity uh, for large scale AI applications, mostly AI opportunity, right? But um, yeah, I see like once again want to highlight this what they even write in the paper. Currently, the biggest bottleneck of cans lies in its slow training. And if, as, if you read a paper, it always sounds great because they need to sell their approach, right? They always. Um, highlight they always push the disadvantages into the discussion section or the future work section so they push it down the paper they want to make you excited by reading the paper that's why if you read papers you should always like also maybe go to the future work or um, discussion section first and check out some some um, limitations of the paper as well because a paper like researchers are highly trained sales machines that try to sell their approach to the reviewers and try to push their approaches into the most relevant conferences of our times uh, because that's what they do right and um and and yeah we should be aware and i i try to disentangle this a bit and and highlight the disadvantages now more i that that doesn't mean i'm bearish about uh, cans or so I think uh, I think there might be some future opportunity but in order to be to so if there is a future opportunity we would have to solve the bottleneck first the bottleneck of paralyzing um, AI training with can, with cans if you are a researcher then this might be a good research uh, thesis to figure out otherwise if this problem doesn't get solved my prediction my bet is on um, traditional say MLP based uh, more traditional deep learning approaches that can be highly paralyzed. Okay, thanks for uh, watching this video. I appreciate having your having your attention. I uh, I appreciate a lot that you sp you give gave me your most valuable resource, with, which is your time. If you want to be on the right side of change and check out our free e email newsletter, just go to thinkster.com, f i n x t e r.com, and subscribe anywhere. Um, we have many like uh, forms where you can just put in your email address and we will uh, keep you on the right side of change. I will send you regular emails, sending you this kind of AI based information, practitioner information uh, to, uh, and also investment um, analysis that I do mostly about tech investment opportunities because I think investing is the, the, pro the way to be on the right side of change in our fast changing uh, times um, yeah thanks for uh, watching and see you next video bye